In the lush landscapes of Sri Lanka, a noble initiative took root with the Indian Housing Project. Its lofty aim? To construct 10,000 houses for the workers of the estate sector, individuals who have long awaited the dignity of decent living conditions. However, beneath the surface of this benevolent endeavor, troubling accusations stir. Members of the plantation community have voiced serious concerns. They allege corruption and favoritism, pointing fingers at a powerful trade union accused of skewing the selection of beneficiaries. Such claims suggest that not all is as transparent as it appears. Adding to the complexity, the removal of credible oversight agencies has raised eyebrows. Why, one might ask, would oversight be lessened if not to obscure the view of prying eyes? This action alone has fueled suspicions of underhanded dealings, particularly around the selection of contractors for this massive project. The plot thickens with the involvement of the National Housing Development Authority and the State Engineering Corporation. Their appointment as implementation agencies was meant to streamline processes. Instead, it has led some to question the integrity of these decisions. Were these entities chosen for their efficacy or were other, less savoury considerations at play? The distribution of lands for the housing units, a critical step in this initiative, remains unresolved. Despite the fanfare of the project's inauguration, the allocation of the 1,300 housing units in the initial phase has yet to be finalised. This delay has not gone unnoticed, nor has it gone unchallenged. Calls for transparency and fairness grow louder. The community demands a just distribution, insisting that the most vulnerable should not be overlooked in the scramble for housing. Meanwhile, the Indian High Commission maintains that the selection process for the implementation agencies was transparent, aimed solely at the project's success. As the situation unfolds, one thing remains clear. The need for a vigilant, unbiased examination of the processes governing this significant endeavour. Only through such scrutiny can trust be restored, ensuring that the Indian housing project becomes a true beacon of hope rather than a monument to mismanagement. The government of India, Joai, is so generous and has kept the promise given by the Indian Prime Minister Modi in 2017 when he visited Sri Lanka. But the way the implementation agencies are appointed... Which task is alleged to be done by a powerful plantation trade union affiliated to the government is disturbing our workers. The manner in which the NHDA is going to offer the particular contracts is also dubious. We have received credible information that on the instruction of this trade union, the implementation agencies have selected contractors, although the selection criterion has to be carried out through the estate workers, cooperative housing society sources alleged according to these sources although the beneficiaries of these houses should be selected regardless of the trade unions they are affiliated to almost all those who are members of this powerful minister's trade union are to be benefited the estate superintendents have been directed to provide the names of these trade union members in the beneficiary list this cannot be allowed we are planning to bring this scandal to the notice of Indian High Commission officials and hope to get them to intervene in the matter. Sources said, meanwhile, Ceylon National Estate Workers Union leader Suresh Vadivel MP said that he received some complaints regarding the selection of beneficiaries, but added that he was able to sort it out with the plantation managers. Those who have houses have been named as beneficiaries. The houses built with an Indian grant should be given only to the vulnerable, but not based on trade union affiliations. As a senior trade union leader and an MP, I'm grateful to India for giving an opportunity for our workers to obtain a house of their own, which is a dream in a lifetime, Vadivel said. Meanwhile, sources at the Indian High Commission, who did not wish to be named, said that the Indian Housing Project, IHP, for plantation workers, is being executed in several phases. According to these sources, during the second and third phases of the IHP, the implementation agencies, including the National Housing Development Authority, NHDA, were engaged by the Indian High Commission through a selection process. All attempts to contact Estate Infrastructure and Water Supply Minister Jiwan Thonderman for a comment regarding this issue went unanswered. Although a text message via mobile phone was sent seeking a comment, the minister did not respond until the paper went for publication. Please subscribe us for more informative videos in the future.